to repair. In this video series I'm going to be going through the top 10 faults on single ovens and cookers. We're going to go through how to diagnose the problem on your cooker, how to rectify the problem and also to get you to the relevant parts that you need for your cooker and associated videos to help you fit the components to your cooker correctly. You will be able to identify the part for your cooker. You will need the full model number. This can normally be found around the cooker door frame. Sometimes they wear off. Sometimes you may need to take the cooker out of its housing in the kitchen and the number will either be on the side of the cooker or on the rear of the cooker. Make sure you get the correct model number to be able to identify the part correctly. I will be uploading these over the course of the next few weeks. They will also have links in the description below and also on the cards above to all the relevant videos and components. Do make sure that you subscribe to the channel and also click the bell icon. This will give you notification to when a new video is being uploaded and also other programs that are coming during the course of this winter with regards live streaming questions and answers to help you rectify the problems on your appliances. Fault number seven, thermostatic problem. Your oven is either burning the food or it is not controlling the temperature correctly. You may be setting the thermostat to 150 degrees, but it's burning all the food. You may have set it to 150 degrees or 200 degrees, and it's not reaching temperature. This may be another fault to do with elements. You can see that in another section on this video. Let me go through the basic two types of thermostatic system. You have the standard thermostat which is on your control so you would set the fan oven to a temperature the light would come on and the oven will start heating now if you set your thermostat to 180 degrees and your food is being burnt there is a good chance that the thermostat has gone faulty or on more modern cookers the NTC sensor may have gone faulty or the circuit board may have gone faulty. Let me explain how a standard thermostat works. The probe is inside the oven, the tube runs up the outside of the cavity to the control panel where you have the thermostat. The thermostat will turn the element on and off as required. If the temperature is below the set temperature, so we've set it to 200 degrees, the probe will be open circuit on the points, meaning electricity will be going through to the element until the cooker gets to about 200-210 degrees, then the points will shut because the gas inside the capillary tube has expanded enough to shut the points. With the more modern system, the NTC system, the NTC sensor will be a set value of ohms resistance at a temperature. Now this will change as the temperature rises and this will then go through to the circuit board where it has a program built into it and it will open a shut, a relay which will send electricity through to the element to control the temperature. Much more accurate but really overkill for the design with regards the cooker. Much more expensive when it fails. It is more accurate but that's because it's electronic. So let me go into depth and show you how this works. Okay, we've got the conventional thermostat set up here. I'm going to set the meter to just straightforward continuity or ohms. And I'm going to connect the two probes to the two connections on the back of the thermostat. As you can see, no circuit. Turn the thermostat on 
and we now have a circuit. This is now set at a temperature of approximately 50-60 degrees. Now by using my blowtorch and applying some heat to the sensor it is now clicked out. That means that it's not sending electricity through to the element and as it cools and it will take a few minutes but I won't wait for that I'll just slightly increase the temperature you heard it click now it's allowing electricity to go through to the element itself I've got a thermostat here I'm going to take apart to show you the inside just so you understand it a little bit better and I will just open this up now on early thermostats uh, somewhere in the region of 10 years old maybe there are some still some manufacturers making them there used to be an adjustment screw where you could calibrate the thermostat on these more modern ones they are preset so I'm going to take this apart carefully and I will zoom in on this for you here is the capillary tube and here is the plunger and the plunger actually pushes in and out as this gas expands. This then activates the point system on the back and you can carefully see here, I'll bring this up to the camera for you, this basically is just a little set of points that connects to the two electrical terminals on the back and when these points are activated then the electricity will go from this point to this point. Now with the NTC sensor system and the circuit board this connects onto the circuit board and this goes into the oven. Now I will set up the multimeter on ohms and I've put a couple of little probes in the back here so I'll try and get this on Right, I'll turn the multimeter on to ohms and as you can see at ambient air temperature we have a reading of 1280, 1281, 1282. Now as the temperature goes up the resistance will also go up. Uh, the ohms reading will reach a higher temperature. Now I've just boiled a cup of water for you and we'll put the probe in there I'll try and keep it down and as you can see the value now is rising now the scales on the charts will be different depending on the NTC and the characteristics of the NTC when it was designed so unless you have an accurate chart of what that NTC value is it's very hard to know if an NTC sensor is within its boundaries and if it's functioning correctly now I would estimate that this water is about 90 degrees because it's taken me a few minutes to bring it over so between 80 and 90 degrees but as you can see the ohms resistance now has settled at 1000 uh, 1, 3, 2, 2 and of course as the water cools the value will drop so if I lift this out you can see now that it's falling quickly and that's basically what an NTC, NTC sensor does this then tells the program on the circuit board and at a certain resistance it will activate the relay and the relay will then add additional power to the element to raise the temperature in the oven and as the value drops below its design levels it will kick back in and raise the temperature again and it's able to control all that with the NTC sensor. My rule of thumb when going out in the field to repair cookers if the NTC sensor at room temperature around 16 18 degrees is somewhere around 1100 it's usually good if it's rising 
um, with the heat applied to it. Uh, to have it accurate you would need the chart as I said and all the charts do vary on different NTC sensors but you'll find detailed videos on NTC sensors at our website also you'll find a video on how relays work and there are also other videos to show you how to actually replace thermostats, NTC sensors and control boards.